Welcome to Dish with Donald and... Keith Brown. Keith Brown is my special co-host. Magician, entertainer, yeah. businessman, would you say? Yeah, I think so. The first time I met you was eight years ago. And I think you were 15 or 16. About, yeah. And I was at your place and I said, any hocus pocus and I'm out the door. <laughs> it's true. Have you ever heard a girl tell you that? Uh... Maybe. <laughs> Maybe, I'll bet, I'll bet. I bet you no girl has said to you any hocus pocus in a mother door. I bet you they love your magic. Uh, so a, a lot of people do, tricks. and some people don't. Like, there are people who just don't like magic. Right. Well, that used to be me, remember? Yeah, as I'm sure you know. Absolutely. Never saw a mag magic show until this year. I finally went to see Keith's show at Fringe, and I loved it. It was amazing. Thank you. Yeah, I'm honored to be your first magic show. I think so, that's, a, that's a cool thing to I'm do. I'm your believer, but I'm not a believer in general. So let's see what you got. Sure. You know what? I'm going to show you. It, it's just a Quarter, right? You can take a look at it's it. It's a quarter. And I have, uh, I have some cards here, but there's actually a slit in it. And the reason I have it is so that I can take that quarter and just very fairly push it through like that. And right. you know what? You're probably thinking to yourself, there's there's nothing really amazing about just pushing a quarter through a slot, right? Um, and it is it is a real quarter. Yeah, you can take a look a at it. It's a real quarter, and that's a real hole. Well, the thing is, what's really amazing about it is this, is you can take a look and oh see my. that really is oh. real and solid. Wow, yeah? it's, like a, it's, like a, it's like a steel brick. And there's no holes or anything? There's no, I don't know how you do that. Wow. Thank you. Gee whiz. I'm a believer again. Okay, for a few minutes. That's awesome. Awesome job. Thank now, you. we're going to have an amazing show today. We are. Are you ready? I am. I'm I looking forward to it. I don't think you're quite ready for what you're in store for, but I, I bet you... Sounds like you have a surprise for me. Well, I like it. Well, it's going to be good. It's going to be a good show. I really appreciate you being my co-host this week. Well, thank you for having me, Donald. Thank you so it's my much. pleasure. When we come back... We're going to have somebody that I don't think needs any introduction. Practically everyone in London knows her. Back in a moment. Welcome back. We have the girl who needs no introduction, but we must. <laughs> Katu, how are you doing, Katu? I'm very well, my darling. Um, I do all sorts of lovely things like talk to people like you and so every now and then <laughs> well, I, and Keith yes well he's gorgeous but, you have know, you met before you. yes yes oh, I've yeah. seen him before I'm sure yes I'm sure he's done some tricks for you um, no I would have remembered that <laughs> I'm sure you would not yet <laughs> <laughs> oh the I'm night, gonna blow a well, boob by the, the end of the night the day is young isn't it anyway <laughs> well, do you still go by Aphrodite yes it is Miss Aphrodite. Miss Aphrodite, where the hell did that come from? Well, Aphrodite, you oh, know. No. And y in your case, I, I would I... introduce you as Miss Very Fits Loosely. Oh. oh. Listen, I knew what your name meant. I just wanted to hear it from you. <laughs> now, you are well known around London. Um, slightly, yes. yes. I, I'm, I'm a little demure, but that's all right. No, I, well, you <laughs> demure. You're known for being tight with the money. But you ask for the money for a lot of volunteer court, volunteer work, right? Yes, I do. You do uh, a lot of shows. Yes, I do, and yes, I do. Um, recently, I've been doing it for St. Leonard Society, which is at 405 Dundas Street. It's a youth outreach program, and it's to help abandoned, abused, neglected, uh, um, misused youth, uh, those that need a different sense of education, whether it be to go to bartender course or first aid or, or something else. I was informed that it was about $67 on average to go to a program. Really? And that's the average thing. So it's a lot of work because I think every time I do a show, I think I'd like to be able to send six to 12 kids off to something. I know what it's like not to have, and right. I know what it's like to go through um, hell and a hard time. I know what it's like to be abused and, and be. Um, misrepresented and right. uh, given bad information and go through hell so you yes, should have and you know i think that people uh, because you are very visual you know everyone knows oh, of really? you. once they oh. see you they don't forget you right Katu? <laughs> but but i also think that the visual hides the story the story of your life right yes to some extent and i think most drag queens that would be true to some extent mm -hmm. um I was always looking for something so I could deal with the pain and I could deal with the, the rejection. And I'm like, okay, well, in high school, I learned one time when you got on stage and you introduced the bullies and tried to get them to come on stage, these big people like this that were magnificent and grand all of a sudden became under your shoe and they just sort of scurried away. Right. And it's like, well, I can use that now. Being faith based, I wanted to do something that would stand out. And I thought, well, I like stage. I enjoy talking mm -hmm. to people. 
I want to do fundraising. And my prayer was get me through this and let me do something that's constructive and right. something that shows that you did not win. Um, Cause you, darling, have you ever been in the closet? Only to get something out. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it, it's too small. I would need one the size, I don't know, the size of an average well, living room. Well, because you've been, you've been someone who has dressed up and been very open about your sexuality and your orientation and your visual, you've always dressed up beautifully. You also have received attention years before gays received acceptance, right? Yes, I used to work at a fast food restaurant, which will remain nameless um, for many reasons. Um, Write me and I'll tell I, you after. I was, <laughs> I, I remember a, a, a man one time threw a burger at my face oh, uh, across the counter and sprayed me with a ketchup. A Big and, Mac? Yeah, really. Oh. It was, you know, he wasn't so big. But anyways, it was the ketchup, it was all over the place. Wow. Um, my boss was not supportive and said I had to clean it up. Wow, really? I had to mop the floor, I had to clean it up, and that was London, and that was acceptable. I had to clean it up if you wanted your job, and if I didn't, I was going to be fired. Um, I had a customer had punch me, punch you, yeah. and I've been slapped, and I've been spat at, right. and it's, nobody does anything about it because you call the police, they're not, it's not really, that sort of thing. The boss won't let you. You're under threat to be fired. You need the job. You don't have money. You right. need the job. So you need to. The one time when the man spat at me, I left it sitting on my top until it dried and I went home. The girls I worked with were in oh, tears. Like Mona Lewinsky. Oh, yeah. Well, yes, but I left it. Yeah, except yeah. a little more politer, and I didn't warrant it. But I had it on on me, and I left it there, so I could make a point. He said, "Well, you can go down and wash it off," and I go. Well, no, I'll leave it on because mm -hmm. you okayed this behavior. Right. So this is what you want as well. I am no one to deprive you. Customers that heard it that were annoyed, and most people won't say anything. Mm -hmm. they, wa they walk away, oh, it's terrible, I don't want to do it. I'm the customer, when I see it, I say something. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm not afraid of confrontation, socially, culturally, morally, ethically. I really don't care. Big black drag queens aren't common, and if you cross this one, she's gonna lambaste your glass jaw. I'm not afraid to tell them off. And when the man punched me, mm. I thought somebody would have called the police. Right. Um, no. So wow. in that aspect, people will look at you and say, well, you, you must have deserved it or something. I'm a customer service worker at a restaurant. I'm there to give you your fries, your pie, your burger, your straw if you so need, extra napkins. I am not there for your abuse. If you have issues, go to the library, go to an ashram, a mosque, a church, temple, get a book. There's lots in the library. The library people here in London here are willing to help you find anything. Find something. Become more productive. Right. If this black drag queen, who is way down here, can rise up and go do it, nobody else has any excuse. So Keith, are you over the shock yet of this uh, guest? Uh, no, actually. I've actually, this is not my first oh, it exposure. Hasn't. No, not at all. Oh. I actually, I, I played Truth or Dare with a, a drag queen in Orlando, the last two fringes. And how did you survive? I, uh, let's say he won last year, and this year I got him back. I had to wait an entire year to get him back, and he waited 24 hours. So next year I'm already planning. I have no idea how, I'll, how uh, I'm gonna do it, but there's stuff in the works. Because but, he's going to see it coming. And how does Katu compare to your experience with drag queens? I think you're a, a, a lot louder and, 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 and sassier, and, and I love oh, it. And oh, I also you love admire your, like, your determination, your dedication, that no matter what the world throws at you, that you're, you're sticking to who you are. Because and you, dealing, and like, cause I think that's unacceptable behavior. Like, we're well, all humans, right? right. It's, it seems to be a double standard. If group A does it, we go, oh, well, they're just not nice. We make an excuse. Um, it's, oh, well, maybe they didn't mean it. They had a bad day. Mm -hmm. If I go do it, mm -hmm. if I go to punch somebody or scrape up their car or threaten them with something, the police are called, and I'm in prison 10 days yeah, before I did it and come out 35 right. years after I should have because that's appropriate. It, it was like the movers that robbed me in, when I went to BC. Mm -hmm. The judge was a racist, and she's like, you people lie. I lost everything, and it was acceptable. The you, you stress I went through. You redefine drama queen. But you oh. also you also have experienced some funny experiences like when you drive through at the the fast food place. Remember? Oh yes, we had this woman who was graciously well endowed. Um, I don't know if I would have done what she's done. No, I wouldn't have done it at all. No. But she went through drive through and she'd ordered a milkshake and some other things, and she came through drive through and she had no top on, 
and she's shaking these um, rather large bosoms, and they're they're wow. going back like bowls of Jello, and I was quite awestruck. And I and she goes, so what do you think of these? And me being bitchy, and I've had enough of people of that day. I turn and I go, ladies and gentlemen, I have now found Silicon Valley. Wow. <laughs> well, you know what? The boss didn't like that. He said you should have called me. And the girls that I was working with were like. That was funny. The girl and some of the guys thought it was funny too. You Katu are been a fabulous guest. We really appreciate having oh, you on. Oh, thank you so and much. And we know we will see you on stage for many years to come. Oh. And we will know that you're gonna continue your benefits and we really appreciate your stopping by. Thank you, my darling. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you so much. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back. Our second guest has made a life of keeping it real. Welcome, Brian. Hi, Donald. Brian, tell us exactly what you do right now. Well, I'm the executive director of regional HIV AIDS connections, so I'm responsible for oversight of the programs and services that serve people living with, affected by, or at risk for HIV and AIDS, and also hepatitis C. Yeah. I, uh, well, you know, we both know the normal heart, yes. Larry Kramer's story, a very passionate person who was controversial in right. his day, right. but I love him. I admire him. What has brought you to where you are today? What a great question. I, I, I mean, I think about my whole career trajectory, so to speak, and I'm, I've always been in a helping profession of some form. I've worked within developmental services for years. Even when I was self-employed, I ran an introduction service for single people helping them find relationships and marriage. I did that for about four years. Wow. And then trans transitioned from that into um, working in employment services for people with disabilities. I worked at Leeds Employment Services for about four years community live in London for a couple of years and then spent a decade at Goodwill Industries before I kind of made a defining career decision for myself to move into uh, HIV and AIDS sector work. Would you call yourself an activist? I think I'm an activist. Um, maybe a, I mean sometimes that has a negative connotation mm -hmm. as, as a controversial stand up and get in your face kind of approach. I'm not necessarily... Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm that kind of guy right. but I certainly um, utilize the skills and energy and resources I have to hopefully affect change in our system and help marginalized communities work toward having better health outcomes and a better life. Right. Yes. Definitely. Yeah. How long have you been executive director? Yeah, so about seven years. I've been at the agency for nine and about two years in, um, the executive director at the time was moving on and uh, I stepped in as interim ED and then became the ED. So seven years in total. Now, have you had much experience with this kind of organization? I have not actually. I've worked with a bunch of different organizations, but not specifically this one. Right. And I would like to. What's uh, what's something that you've accomplished in your time as the executive director? Well, uh, <laughs> I like to think there's been a number of things accomplished. I won't attribute them to me specifically, but in the context of a team, uh, our recent amalgamation with the John Gordon Home, which is um, has a long history of providing. Uh, palliative care for people who are dying of AIDS in the day. Not that people don't die of AIDS here in, in 2015, but that happens less often. John Gordon Home has become a transitional housing um, support service for people that it, basically you come in and, and for the most part you get well and you can go back out to independent living. So RHAC and John Gordon Home have very similar mandates and we felt that in the context of being able to you know, respond to the changing landscape. There's lots of shifts in funding. We wanted to strengthen our capacity to be able to respond effectively to the people we serve. So we journeyed through the, uh, we went through this journey of amalgamation, which is a long process. It took us a couple years to plan for it. We legally amalgamated on April 1st, and now we're still dealing with the operational aspect of amalgamating. Well, I, I think it's interesting that people, uh you know, in the way that they view AIDS now, right. because of the drugs that have come out mm -hmm. that have been very successful, mm -hmm. um, I think that we can use this as a teaching moment for uh, viewers who perhaps don't feel that we should be as careful as we should be. Right. What a, that's a great question or a great comment. One of my challenges, and I think our sector's challenges, people think this issue is over, and it is not over, right? And um, there is no cure for HIV, uh, and people still do die of AIDS. In fact, I wrote an article for one of our most recent newsletters, A Connection, and it talked about a situation in Saskatoon where because of the absence of appropriate um, care treatment testing, 
that people, it was primarily in the Aboriginal communities, were dying of AIDS. And this is in 2012, 13, 14, 15, happening present day because the appropriate services aren't there. So that can happen. There's also a story in Indiana where um, lots of people who were injecting substances didn't have access to needle syringe programs. Wow. And it was an epidemic proportion of outbreak of HIV in that community because there was opposition against a needle syringe program in the community. So we see that there are effective ways to prevent HIV, but um, there is no cure. Um, it's, it's a complicated illness to have. It can mm -hmm. challenge every aspect of your life. And um, while there's better treatment, that treatment's great if, you're pro if you have access to resources, a good drug plan, right. and um, you know all of your social determinants of health are in order, so to speak. Well, we've come a long way, because yeah. I remember over 20 years ago, I was dating someone out of town who was HIV positive, and I happened to tell the story to one of my clients. And she said, uh, we have cats. What if the cat scratched you? Yeah. Totally not an aware person, right? Mm -hmm. um, when that has nothing to do, I mean, that's not going to happen. That wasn't a danger. And it, so it goes to show you how much has changed in 20 years, which uh, you definitely have seen. Yeah, I, oh, I, I have a very recent story. Someone on the campaign trail came to my door just last week and they were aware of HIV and AIDS as an issue in Africa in particular. And they pointed out that they had earrings they were wearing from Africa. But then she needed to tell me, but I did wash them before I put them on, right? Wow, like, yeah. you can't get HIV from earrings That's from right. Africa, right? right. So, so there's still a lot of ignorance, yes. a lot of misconception. Um, and uh, it's, it's, it's the work of our HAC to continue to um, educate the public, teach people about safer sex methods. That's still mm -hmm. important. Um, but it's an ongoing effort to make sure people don't lose sight of it's a serious issue. On that note, what's the way that people can get more involved with your organization? Because I don't think there's such thing as over-education, and the more people know, the better, right? Ab absolutely. Uh, well, we have a very... Our organization is community-inspired in that it comes from volunteers. When government wasn't responding to HIV, letting gay men die in the early 80s, mid-80s, early 90s, it was volunteers that stepped up and made the organization what it is. That's activist Brian talking there. That's activist Brian <laughs> talking, that's right. And, um, and so people still, we, we rely heavily on a volunteer base. So uh, our, our community relations coordinator, Martin McIntosh, he's the guy that you get in contact with if you want to volunteer at our HAC or the John Gordon home location of our HAC. And we have events, we have educational efforts that we, we have volunteers engaged in, we have fundraisers. Um, a whole series of um, opportunities to get involved and learn more. That's a great question. Ma, I have a friend who was retiring. She was the client and, and she was re retired years ago. She is Sue. Yes. Sue who, Parkinson, who was mm -hmm. volunteered forever. She had, she's I think over 10 years now. She's at our front desk. That's right. And she's really, she, just, she doesn't want to leave. Eh? She doesn't want to leave your desk. No, we don't want her to leave. No, of course not. No, no. Sue, no. so we're, we're just joking. <laughs> the, vol the volunteer base actually, and the analysis of the work we do, the, the group that volunteers is the equivalent of four full-time staff over the course of a year wow. that we are not funded to, um, right. to you know, have on site. So they really help us serve our mission. We can't do it without the valuable people from our community that come and spend. They choose to spend time at our HAC. Volunteers can make lots of choices, and I really value and appreciate that people make the choice to come to our HAC to make that difference. So, Brian, in just in a nutshell, yeah. what, would, what do you think is going to be your legacy in terms of our community here? Well, you know, um, I, when I think about some of the things that interest me, I think about addressing HIV stigma, I think about addressing the issues associated with addictions and mental health, and the needs um, of the in injection drug using popu population, which are at high risk for HIV, um, are a very marginalized group in our community. A lot of judgment is placed on injection drug users. Right. And if I can do anything to affect change in how that population is observed um, and supported, then I'll feel I'll have done something good. You know, we're, we're just moving forward with a, a feasibility study for supervised injection services. Very controversial idea, mm -hmm. but it is part of the addictions continuum that we believe that is needed to keep injection drug users healthy. We've recently launched the Naloxone right. program to help save lives for people that overdose. Well, Brian, I've yeah. watched you from a f far and close over the last 10 years, and I know what a great job you're doing, and thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me here. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back. Keith, this has been quite the show. It has been a lot of fun. A lot of fun. You know, you're the magician, but I dated a warlock once. 
years ago, and I told him, any hocus pocus and I'm out the door. But with him, he had a hocus pocus of an earthly kind, so I didn't mind. <laughs> You have another trick for us. I do, I do. You know what, I've been doing magic for a very long time and a lot of people ask me, Keith, how do you do it? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna break the cardinal rule, I'm gonna tell you. You I'm gonna are? let you in, yeah. Wow, oh, hey, just dish exclusive. Mm -hmm. The real it. secret is I have the magic touch. Oh, I've heard that before, <laughs> okay. The yeah. thing is I can also give it to people. So put it your finger just like this. Okay, you ready? I feel like E.T., okay. Mm -hmm. And just like that, now you have it. You might start feeling it go down your finger, into your hand, up in your arm, and into your body, okay? And Donald? I'm feeling something. I'm gonna drop the cards like this. When you want, can you say stop for okay. me, please? Here, how about this? I go, I'll, I'll go a bit fa I'll go slower, you go faster, okay? Stop. Right here. So I want you to take a look at that card. I'll yep. show it for everybody at home. Yep. You know, for those at home, I'm actually gonna ask you to remember the other cards. So we're gonna do this with two, okay? So uh, both, right? I love that I picked a queen. Ooh. And oh. what I want you to do is take that finger. Don't worry. I want you to press it right there on the top, okay? You did this. Check this out. Very carefully. I'm going to spread through. And you can see down in the center, there's one card that turns blue. Impressive, no. right? Yeah. What's even more impressive is it's not just any card. It's actually that wow. queen of hearts, the one that you chose He earlier. picked my queen. I love it. Well, That's great. You know what? I think for the people at home, we're going to do it one more time because we also have to find their card, right? So here, Donald, what I want you to do is you're gonna press again, and when you press, their card will be the only blue card. So go ahead, press right there. And check this out, down in the center. One more card. Uh, here, try, try one more time, sorry. Uh, down in the center, one more card. Oh, you know what? I told you that when you touch it would be the only blue card. And there is only one blue card. It's that one sitting right there. Can you do me a favor and show everybody at home that other card for us, please? Oh my God. Yeah. Oh. Thank you. I, you are such a rat. <laughs> You're good at this. The only problem is though, Donald, is that this card, it doesn't, it doesn't match anymore. It doesn't match any of the cards that I have. So we're gonna, we're gonna revert it, okay? We're gonna make sure it fits in. So do me a favor, press right there. More? Yeah, just a little bit. Ooh, that was a bit too much, but you know what? That's okay because that's the best I've ever seen oh my anyone goodness. do that. They actually all. Oh, I love it. I've got the magic touch too. That's what? That is amazing. You really are impressive. Thank that's you very wonderful. much. And I'll just take my touch back. That's great. Thank you, Thank you so much, Keith.